Hey, welcome for joining us on World Insight. I'm Li Chiu-yuan, in for Tianwei tonight. We start today's show with Chinese President Xi Jinping's state visits to three countries, Serbia, Poland and Uzbekistan, from June 17th to 24th. He has arrived in the capital city of Belgrade. President Xi has packed schedule during his three-day stay there in the nation, where he is expected to attend a signing ceremony for cooperation deals. He will also lay a cornerstone for a Chinese cultural center in Belgrade with the Serbian president. Also notably, this is the very first visit by a Chinese president to the nation in its present and past form in over three decades. Then President Xi will fly to Poland before wrapping up his trip in the Uzbek capital, Tashkent where he will attend the 16th meeting of the Council of Heads of State, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now, Xi Jinping's three-nation tour marks his second visit to the Central and Eastern European countries in three months since a trip to the Czech Republic in March. The first visit to Serbia by a Chinese president in more than 30 years. President Xi Jinping kicks off his visit to Serbia today. Ahead of his visit to Serbia, President Xi penned an article titled Enduring Friendship and True Partnership in the country's oldest daily newspaper, Politica. He said the people of China and Serbia are connected by their hearts and hands and have a special affection for each other. She noted that there have been constant breakthroughs in their cooperation within frameworks such as the Belt and Road Initiative. This is a, a frank, warm, uh, very friendly uh, op-ed that covers everything. It covers the history of our two countries' relations, it covers the extent of the political and economic operation, but it also looks ahead. Situated in the middle of Central and Southeast Europe, the Republic of Serbia is commonly known as the crossroads of Europe. Serbia is a pivotal part of China's Belt and Road Initiative and the center of the 16 plus 1 mechanism which aims to facilitate cooperation between China and Central and Eastern European countries. Within the 16 plus 1 framework, Serbia is indeed a bellwether and a front-runner in project diversity and numbers. Bilateral cooperation on infrastructure has also been noteworthy. Now we have the high-speed railway project from Belgrade to Budapest and the number 11 expressway linking Montenegro and Serbia. China's total investment in Serbia has reached between 2.2 billion and 2.5 billion euros. This current trip includes stops in Serbia, Poland and Uzbekistan from June 17th to 24th. He will soon meet with Serbian President Tomislav Nikolic and will lay a cornerstone for a Chinese cultural center in Serbia's capital, Belgrade. Then, he will travel to Poland before rounding up his trip in the Uzbek capital, Tashkent, where he will attend the 16th meeting of the Council of Heads of State of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization on June 23rd and 24th. This year marks the 15th anniversary of the founding of the SCO. Chinese President Xi Jinping's visits are being viewed as a chance to significantly boost the Belt and Road Initiative and enhance regional and international cooperation. Now for more on President Xi Jinping's visit, we're joined in our Beijing studio by Mr. Jiang Tianping. He's the director of the Department of International Economic Cooperation, Institute for International Economic Research, National Development and Reform Commission. In Reading UK, we have Professor Yelena Kalujnova. She's the director of the Center for Euro-Asian Studies at the University of Reading. Thanks for joining us uh, to you both. Let me start with Professor John here. Uh, the president has just arrived in Belgrade a couple of hours ago. This is the first visit by a Chinese president in over three decades. And earlier in an interview, the Serbian president kind of expects high expectations. He said that nothing is beginning with the visit, but everything is expanding to an unprecedented proportion. I mean, how do you read that, your reaction to this with regard to the significance of this trip? Yeah, uh, definitely. <coughs> I think this is a very talented scene. And uh, <coughs> this time, I, I think this is a new breakthrough you know, for China's uh, uh, president to visit uh, uh, Siberia. Also, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, relationship between China and uh, Siberia, 
uh, in recent uh, years, uh, you may find that uh, both our, you know, uh, cultural relationship, diplomat diplomatic relationship, as well as economic cooperation, and uh, you know, uh, many many things has already been on the table. Also, <coughs> uh, between China and uh, Central European, East European countries, C C C E C E uh, <laughs> C E countries. C -E countries. Also, we have our new mechanism and uh, cooperation platform. On this platform, actually, some of uh, countries would be very important. I'm afraid that uh, Serbia and Poland, uh, this type of countries uh, may be very important because uh, in the past we have very good uh, you know, relationship and a long history. Mm -hmm. uh, also, right now, actually, they could be a very important partners for both economic uh, aspects <coughs> and uh, you know, uh, uh, diplomatic uh, aspects. Uh, lastly, I think that now uh, Chinese side uh, we provided our the Belt and Road Initiative. Also from uh, Cyber, uh their side, they also have their you know concerns that they, they want to promote their industrial uh, revitalization plan, and this planning could be connected with China with a Belt and Road Initiative. And that's why they can, you know, have so a lot of common interests. And then they, by this time, by this visit, I think that both on bilateral and, uh, you know, uh, 16 plus one, you know, uh, platforms and uh, the Belt and Road Initiative on different uh, platform, and they can have different, you know, cooperation. And Professor Kalushnova, <coughs> your thoughts on this visit by Chinese president to Serbia? Because, like Professor John mentioned, Serbia as a country itself is pushing for reindustrialization. It's also seeking membership from the European Union. Uh, how does cooperation or ties with China fit in the country's vision? Um, I think it's very important now to understand that the map of globalization is changing and more and more China is taking a profound role in a global market. Uh, if we think about geographically, China is in Asia and if we build the relation with uh, Western Europe, it's obviously important uh, to see all other countries around. If, for example, we take uh, one of the biggest projects, the China Central Asia, Asia, West Asia corridor, uh, we see that the gas pipeline is going through Uzbekistan, through Turkmenistan, and towards the Western Europe. So we need to take into account the relations between uh, these countries and China and see pragmatically what should be done. Because uh, we have to realize that the markets is, are not ideal at this stage. And obviously, a lot of countries, uh, like former Soviet Union countries in Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, are coming and forming their new markets. They are emerging markets. And therefore, there are a lot of investments as well as the infrastructure projects are required to make these relations workable. Obviously, during these days, China will sign a number of agreements with the countries for cooperation. But what is uh, very important for me as for the economist, that it's not not only the agreements on the paper, it's also the agreements which are sealed with the special financial deals as well as with the special financial institutions which China are establishing in order to facilitate their infrastructure projects as well as their investment projects. Namely here I am talking about the new funding system which China established as Asian infrastructure investment bank, um, which is definitely will deal with uh, infrastructural projects, and the Silk Road Fund. So for all these agreements, uh, which are very, uh, very important and they are strategic, there is a very hard practical core uh, which is lying on, uh, on the ground. And Professor John, uh, Professor Kalichnova just mentioned the cooperation between uh, China and uh, CEE countries in the financial sector, do you feel that uh, East European countries will build China in the future as a welcome new source of finance and reduce their reliance on traditional Western economies like Germany, like France?
Yeah. Uh, actually, personally, I experienced the you know warmly welcome you know from China's you know capital. Uh, this type of sense from you know uh, CE uh, CE countries. Mm -hmm. For example, when I visited the Czech Re Republic and attended you know China's investment forum, and the president of the Czech Republic expressed his you know uh, very warmly uh, welcome you know to China's investors. Mm -hmm. Also, he. Uh, he expressed he wants to you know attract uh, more and more China's investors to go to his country. Actually, for Poland and for you know Serbia, uh, in case that they want to improve their infrastructure, also they want to solve you know some of problems uh, in pro progress of development. Uh, such as you know uh, manufacturing sectors development and uh, have their you know upgrading their you know economic structure mm -hmm. and then they have to have new sources of capital of course uh, you know that uh, uh, western european countries especially those developed economies uh, france germany uk the eu countries have their plan to mm -hmm. to help you know uh, Central European countries. However, uh, you know that now European countries now uh, actually still suffering uh, a little bit from you know uh, uh, debt crisis. Also, they, they cannot provide you know enough capital you know for uh, those CE countries. Also, especially in the field of infrastructure, on this aspect, actually China's advantages. Uh, it's very obvious. Some of developed economies cannot have this type of advantages. In this regard, I think that both China and uh, developed economies in European countries actually they can work together and uh, promote the you know infrastructure improvement and development in CE countries. I see Professor Kolesnova <coughs> nodding uh, her head there. How do you think that the EU will view Serbia's yeah. cooperation with China? Do you? See see the concerns among Western countries. Well, I uh, absolutely agree. Go ahead. Uh, and basically, uh, what we see now uh, that China is spreading the wings not only in Central Asia, but in Europe. Uh, recently, we had a visit of the China in the UK. And I know, again, a number of the agreements uh, are about cooperation uh, were signed during this visit. Again, I'm coming back to the practical core. China is also working with the custom departments in countries like Poland, Russia, Kazakhstan, reducing the cost of custom clearance along the route. So basically it's not only finance but all other elements are sought through and if we think about that uh, the whole program uh, or the um, project One um, Belt, One Road which was proposed originally or the ideas were li uh, uh, lightened up by the uh, Chinese president in Nazarbayev University in Astana in September 2007 where we now it's a uh, quite a long way already and China is getting dynamically and becoming a quite a strong competitor for emerging markets uh, um, with uh, Europe and uh, United States I think we could see in the years ahead the dominant position of China um, in uh, uh, at least in Central Asia but I wouldn't surprise if it would be Eastern and Central Europe uh, because China is uh, employing the different methods and portfolio of investment in different sectors. If we take for example energy, we know that China uh, is a big recipient and uh, a big, uh, there is a big demand on energy in China and since the country is progressing um, it's going to um, uh, grow in the years ahead. Now now China is trying to build the special relations with Kazakhstan because Kazakhstan and China have a very unique textbook example of the country uh, um, consumer and supplier without transit state which is very rare for the oil market.
And even oil prices are going down, these special relations would be quite practical for China-Kazakhstan because there are no other geopolitical involvements and only the economics, uh, the, uh, basically the clear relations are, are happening. And uh, although uh, Kazakhstan is now is only producing 4% of the total oil uh, for China, I think the situation is going to change. So the portfolio in, of investment is quite interesting. China is offering uh, um, countries in Central Asia um, loans for oil. Uh, there are direct investments. There is an aggressive acquisition of the oil companies. So basically that uh, entrepreneurial spirit which China has, I don't think we are quite uh, well equipped here in, in uh, uh, Europe uh, to compete with, uh, with such policies. So China is adopting this unique strategy in its geopolitical involvement in its partner countries. Uh, Professor John, is it true that China believes there are more opportunities in those states for Chinese investment uh, with easier or cheaper market access even compared to you know, developed European economies? Uh, actually, for CE countries now, definitely they have their series of demand for you know uh, development, including you know how to improve their infrastructure and how to promote their industrial sectors development. Uh, in that process, I think that in the near future, uh, if we can have more investment over there, and if we can promote you know trade uh, volume between two sides that will maybe more depend depend de, depending on you know uh, the future projects for example uh, this uh, at this stage we are promoting you know uh, Siberia uh, hungry you know railway project mm -hmm. uh, if this project could be you know uh, promoted that means we maybe so a lot of equipment will be you know uh, imported from China also uh, over there, you may find that in case they can improve the, their infrastructure, and then some of private investors will be willing, you know, to invest or trade over there, and then some of products uh, in Serbia or Hungary, uh, in Central European countries, uh, they can produce uh, new products. Also, they can. Uh, export those products to Chinese market. So in this regard, I think that uh, you know a huge uh, project, a very important driving force, you know, for bilateral trade and investment uh, relationship improvement between China and the CE countries. It is expected that the president will promote its Belt and Road Initiative to develop economic ties overseas. Uh, what's the special status about these three countries, uh, namely Serbia, Poland, and Uzbekistan, on this trip? What's so special uh, in terms of the Belt and Road Initiative? Uh, Actually, those three countries uh, actually they already expressed uh, their interest. Uh, also, they uh, they said that they want to support uh, you know the Belt and Road Initiative. Also, so they are supporters. Yeah, their domestic uh, planning and the domestic project uh, also already started to connect uh, with uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, such as you know for uh, Serbia their industrial uh, <coughs> re. Uh, virtualization and uh, in uh, Uzbekistan, uh, they also have uh, between China and Uzbekistan. Uh, in the future, we will have our you know uh, China uh, Central Asia and Western Asia Economic Corridor you know uh, program. Uh, meanwhile, from Poland side, they have their sustainable development planning, and this planning can you know, connect with you know a BRI platform. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you look at the three countries' uh, development sta status, uh, you may find that uh, uh, even if they are belonging to European uh, Europe, but uh, their development level, uh, there is a big gap between those uh, Central uh, and uh, Western, uh, Eastern European countries and Western European countries. Uh, in this regard, actually, those CEE countries, they, ho they want to promote their development. On the other hand, actually, according to the Belt and Road Initiative, not only CEE countries, but also those Western European countries, now they express you know, their interest for promoting uh, Belt and Road Initiative. For example, 
both UK, Germany, and France, those European countries, they already you know, join the AIIB. Also, mm -hmm. they want to connect. So in the future, I, I think that on the platform of BRI, we will have our new type of uh, international regional cooperation platform on which actually uh, not only, you know, uh, infrastructure connectivity, but also uh, trade investment uh, promotion and infrastructure connectivities. Meanwhile, people to people connectivity, all of those elements uh, would be on the platform, especially just before we have seen that, uh, you know, uh, Confucius, uh, you know, uh, culture. Uh, actually, this type of, uh, you know, institutions also will promote, uh, you know, people to people uh, connectivity, also uh, culture exchange and education exchange uh, will promote uh, our Belt and Road Initiative construction in the future. And speaking of trade and investment, uh, mm -hmm. let me read our viewer this. Economic ties between China and the CEE countries are actually getting even closer. Trade volume between China and CEE countries reached 56.2 billion U.S. dollars in 2015, a 28% increase from 2010. And Chinese investment in the 16 countries has exceeded 5 billion U.S. dollars, but so far, Eastern European countries accounts for only about 2% of total Chinese investment in Europe. So now do you expect rapid growth of bilateral trade investment, maybe a bigger share in the future? Uh, at this stage, the uh, share uh, is quite limited because uh, you know that uh, those countries, uh, their economic scale and trade scale are uh, not so big. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for three different countries have different situation. For example, Poland uh, is the biggest uh, trade partner with China, you know, in CE countries. The annual you know, trade volume is 18 billion US dollars, this type of level. Uh, but if you look at uh, uh, Uzbekistan, maybe, you know, just uh, uh, about 20, uh, 2 billion US dollars, this type of level. But uh, Serbia may be smaller a little bit. But, mm -hmm. If you look at uh, Serbia's uh, export to China, this is growth rate about 20%. Uh, so that means uh, China's market becomes uh, more and more important uh, for Serbia. Also for uh, Uzbekistan, also have this uh, similar situation. So in the future, I'm afraid that uh, China's market will be more and more important for those uh, CE countries. Meanwhile, just before I mentioned that in the future, in case we, ha we can uh, you know, explore some of huge infrastructure projects, and uh, that will benefit for you know, two sides to explore the potential trade space and the investment space. But now with China's involvement, do you see the concerns among other Western countries of this potentially divisive influence on European continent? I don't think so. Uh, actually, uh, for BRI, we already said that this is a very you know, inclusive you know, uh, cooperation uh, platform. That means uh, BRI will not chase you know, uh, regional economic integration. That will depend on situation. For example, between China and the Asia country, Asia countries, uh, we already have our you know free trade agreement. Mm -hmm. But we also realize that uh, some of other countries, uh, maybe you know, uh, for example, in uh, Western Asia countries, some of countries, uh, even if they are not uh, the member of WTO, so it would be difficult, you know, have regional integration. But for European countries, uh, some of uh, you know CE countries are belonging to uh, EU members. Some of uh, are not the members of EU. So in this regard, I think that we will respect uh, you know the decision uh, made by those CE countries. Also, by uh, for our you know uh, BRI cooperation, uh, we will promote uh, five type of connectivity. We'll cover those. Uh, five different type of fields, including, you know, policy dialogue, infrastructure connectivities, uh, trade promotion, and uh, financial support, uh, I saw as, you know, our, you know, investment cooperation. So in this regard, I think that uh, we will have our more creative economic cooperation uh, uh, approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, this type of cooperation will be more practical. Uh, not only, you know, uh, s uh, simple, you know, regional integration.
So like you said, the BRI mm -hmm. and China's cooperation in that region involves lots of infrastructure projects. So there is concern. Uh, the local financial experts have complained that the infrastructure projects have been largely financed by Chinese credits and built by Chinese workforce. Therefore, it did not inject much cash investment into the local economies. What do you say to that kind of criticism? Uh, Actually, uh, if you look at some of infrastructure in other economies from China side, we are very willing, you know, to cooperate with host countries and third parties, in our countries, from European countries, even if from you know the U.S. side. Uh, also, actually, if you look at the labor force issues, also you know local uh, worker force would be welcomed. The problem is that sometimes maybe for some of you know infrastructure projects they have their you know uh, uh, requirements for you know uh, the project period, and sometimes if you look at for for some of developing countries their you know local you know uh, workforce they cannot satisfy those requirements, mm -hmm. and then at this at this time point. And maybe China's, you know, some of workforce will be needed. Actually, this type of situation happened in different developing economies. So, uh, generally, I like to say that uh, for those uh, this type of cooperation issues uh, between China and the host countries and the third parties, we need to, you know, negotiate. Also, we need to talking about, uh, you know, uh, if we can promote cooperation or. or what type of you know uh, workforce should be from what type of countries, and then I think that we can satisfy the requirement from the project and the cooperation program. Mm -hmm. And about the 16 plus one mechanism you mentioned in the beginning, you know some has suspected the creation of this 16 plus one might be a divide and conquer strategy of China toward Europe, but others also believe that the mechanism could be helping you know, with the integration of Europe. What's your take on this? Uh, so you know that the EU has uh, a very strict economic rule regulations. In case you, you join the EU, that means uh, your international trade policies and your, you, know, uh, you, can, you, uh, you have to follow the rules made by EU. Meanwhile, you will have no uh, your right to, uh, to to negotiate and to sign, you know, bilateral uh, free trade agreements or have other, you know, uh, independent, you know, trade and investment policies. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, follow EU. But in case that you have not been involved in EU, that means your you know trade policies, your investment policies would be more independent. You can make decision by yourself. But many you know CE countries now they think that EU can provide EU you know integrated market can pre provide opportunities for them. So that's why Serbia mm -hmm. uh, will be joining maybe after a few years. So in this regard, I think that uh, those CE countries, uh, they can choose what, what type of cooperation approaches would be better for them. But for, from Chinese side, we will respect their choice. And uh, also, I think that in the near future, maybe between China and the CE countries, we can have different cooperation approaches. Also, we can explore you know, uh, new solutions. That 16 plus one mechanism was first articulated four years ago in 2012. Now, four years on, how would you evaluate the progress been made within this framework? Yeah, uh, for this new mechanism, actually, uh, every year you may find that uh, there will be top leaders dialogue. Also, between China and the CE countries, uh, we have already made uh, our you know uh, medium and long term uh, development planning. Uh, based on that planning, actually, CE countries and China already started a lot of you know action. Uh, for example, just before we mentioned, uh, you know, uh, the railway project, uh, mm -hmm. uh, bridge constructions, uh, and other infrastructure projects already uh, in progress of implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, you may find that uh, trade volume, investment volume, also uh, has to be promoted. Uh, 
also, you, you may find that between China and those, some of the CE countries, we signed a series of you know, a memorandum on a BRI cooperation. Uh, some of them belong to central government, between central governments. Uh, some of them belong in, uh, are between you know, governments, uh, governmental departments. Uh, so I think that all of those uh, uh, projects uh, or those uh, documents uh, has already, you know, uh, created a new, you know, situation, uh, cooperation situation between China and the CE countries. Also, two countries, uh, those uh, firms, uh, those companies, uh, and those people from two sides uh, can benefit from that uh, uh, cooperation. Now, after Serbia, the president will also uh, visit Poland and Uzbekistan where he will attend the SEO summit. What kind of deals or pronouncements will be particularly looking for? Yeah, uh, I think that now actually uh, between China and the CE countries, uh, we can explore cooperation in many, many sectors. And also we will have our co comprehensive uh, corporations. So that means, uh, you know, uh, in energy sectors, uh, financial sectors, uh, cultural sectors, uh, education sectors, uh, tourism sectors, uh, many, many things uh, could be, you know, could be done between two sides. Also, those, uh, I think that uh, uh, those uh, CEOs or those companies uh, also will be very interested to making efforts to explore, you know, potential cooperation opportunities between two sides. Mm -hmm. And would those experts say that China is to try to radically increase its presence in Balkans and Europe? Would you agree? That's a. Uh, you you mean uh, sorry? This visit, this recent visit to Czech Republic in March, yeah. and now to Serbia, to Poland, these CEE countries. Some actually say that China is seeking to position itself to Europe with regards to its economy. Do you see it that way? Uh, yeah, I think that not only Chinese side, but also you know CE side and uh, EU side. Actually, they realize that in order to promote you know CE countries' development, you know only you know EU countries uh, do this type of things. That the progress uh, will be slow a little bit, and the progress will be quite limited. So that's why today China is an uh, you know, emerging economy. Also China's economic scale, China's market scale, and China's capacity you know, for development would be become some more and more valuable for CE countries. So in this regard, uh, I think that uh, EU countries, uh, both uh, Western EU and the CE countries, uh, they realize that uh, this type, you know, cooperation within three parties, China, uh, Western EU, and uh, CE countries, that would be uh, more important and also will benefit for all of, you know, stakeholders. In general, at this stage, how does China view its relation with CEE countries, Central Eastern European countries, in its foreign policy as a whole? Because it feels like before that 16 plus 1 mechanism articulated four years ago, this relation has not been placed among the top you know, priorities. Uh, yes, I, I think that uh, CEE countries, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the past, uh, they have you know a traditional relationship with China. In the past, and uh, but now, uh, both China and CE countries, uh, we are facing these challenges in progress of development. In this regard, uh, there is a demand for two sides to promote cooperation. Meanwhile, you know that BRI platform actually provided new opportunities for China and all of those EU countries to cooperate on this new platform uh, with new you know, uh, approaches and new ways. So in this regard, I think that by our comprehensive cooperation between China and the CE countries, our dipl diplomatic relationship also will be improved. Meanwhile, our strategic partnership uh, relationship also will be on the new level. I also got to touch mm. upon the problem of overcapacity. That's a major problem that China is going through 
uh, when it's going through its own economic restructuring transformation. Well, China's export of domestic manufacturing overcapacity is set to top the agenda of President Xi Jinping's visit to the three nations. But earlier in April, a Chinese company actually bought a Serbian steel company uh, previously owned by Pittsburgh-based U.S. Steel. Now there are complaints about uh, Chinese steel dumping and there are concerns about overcapacity in China's steel sector. How do you see uh, these three nations you know, can cooperate to solve the overcapacity problem? Some of people said that uh, on the platform of BRI, China wants to export our overcapacity over in some of you know, uh, manufacturing sectors. Exactly. I don't agree this type of saying because uh, you know that uh, actually manufacturing sectors, uh, you know, international uh, transfer, this is uh, you know, economic rules. Uh, that means you know that uh, mm -hmm. uh, every uh, and, uh, every company, so corporations uh, in st uh, steel and iron uh, sectors or cement sectors, uh, actually they will consider their cost in different economies. So, just before you mentioned the uh, Chinese corporation uh, uh, has bought uh, you know uh, steel uh, uh, steel plants in in Siberia. Actually, this is not China's capacity move out. Actually, this is China's buying. So I, I like to say that uh, we have to respect economic rules. Also, China's uh, cooperation with CE countries, with other you know, countries along the uh, routes, actually, uh, that will, we will consider the demand, you know, infrastructure and uh, uh, manufacturers development demand uh, in those countries. Uh, we will consider our, you know, we, co we say that uh, that's belonging to industrial capacity uh, cooperation okay. instead of over capacity. All right, let's leave it yeah. there. Thank you very much, Professor John, for your insight and sitting through with me this whole hour. Thank you so much. And that's a wrap for World Insight tonight. We hope to, you to tune in again next time for more. I'm Shannon Beijing from all of us on the team. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.